Hello, this is Jenny Bell from Clarington, Ohio, and I'm listening to Barbecue Central. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me! Fine, how's it going? <laughs> you have a great show, I'm a big fan. Boing. So what, what, what seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the, in the crackle. Charbono! It's all about the Charbono, dude! Succulent fish, what? We ate two feet for wiener. So listen, Laverne, shit feet. Yeah, I'm shaking like a dog shit pea seed. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. <laughs> top men. And just like that, we are into the second hour. It's the Barbecue Central Show. The live fire fun and frivolity show that can be found live everywhere across the interwebs globally from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern. Still to come on the show this evening, Big Mo Quezon in about 13 minutes from now. Don't forget you can follow me socially at BBQ Central Show on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Snapchat. Slash BBQ Central Show on Facebook and Twitch for video feeds. You can also get a video feed on YouTube, which is slash RD Rempy. Uh, we have a brand new uh, Vortic piece on watch cam this evening. Look at that bad boy. Oh, yeah. You, lo- oh, you love it. Why is it not uh, focusing? That's, a- that's sad. Okay. We'll just jam it right in there and hopefully it'll, uh, it's not definitely not taking. Oh, man. Now, one day I'm really going to buy real cameras. Oh, I do not want to close the app. Oh, my. Let's see. Does that work? No. This is a travesty. All right. Well, one day it's going to work. There it is. Can you see? No. No. Yes. Illinois Sterling. So I had to send. The two that I had back, okay, those were prop watches. The uh, blackface Elgin that I had, or black dial Elgin that I had, was going on the Jack Ryan set, I believe, the Amazon show, and the uh, railroad watch they had earmarked for something else, and then they sent me back. So this watch is actually a... Uh, what were they calling it? A box watch. A box watch. So one of their watch makers, like this, is the test for them to see if they have the stuff. And he makes his bones here on this watch. Plus, uh, this is a, a new brass style case, brand new. So they're going to. Uh, they sent it to me uh, probably for some length of time here, so they can see how the case patinas over time. And then they can figure out whether they want to keep making that style case or not. Uh, but it's uh, fully functional once again, uh, as you will hear in the read a little bit later in the show. Vortic makes these uh, wrist watches, but this was a pocket watch originally in its first life. And we thank John Solberg for saying, hey, dummy, uh, nice watches that you're wearing week after week. How about wearing them upside down so we don't have to sit there and look at them upside down? Advice taken. So while this watch is upside down on my wrist for your viewing pleasure, it looks like it's 100% correct. You're reading it right. You get to see the real view look, even though it's upside down to me. Coming up on the best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less this Friday, we will be bringing you episode 163, if you can believe it, bringing you all the way back to February 16th, 2010. My mom, Connie Rempe, was a guest at that time, and she was doing a monthly appearance entitled Connie's Recipe Corner, which was a thing back in the day. That segment consisted of a full meal, appetizer, main dish, dessert. On deck for this segment was a buffalo chicken dick... uh, (laughs) 
What? Uh, <laughs> they're from the country, everybody. A buffalo chicken dip appetizer recipe. A bow tie pasta with roasted red pepper sauce main dish recipe. And rounding it out with a dessert recipe called Next Best Thing to George Clooney. Whatever that is. Because this episode was from 11 years ago, I do not. Andrew, you are not the fire. I do not have the recipe for this one. It's not something that I have uh, track downable by any stretch of the imagination. Now, 10 years ago, yes, or 11 years ago, I did have those. You just emailed me recipes or whatever it was, and I was shooting them all over the place. But 11 years removed from this, I don't have the recipes. So look up Buffalo Chicken Dick recipes, bow tie pasta with roasted red pepper sauces, and a dessert called The Next Best Thing to George Clooney. And yes, Carl, chicken dick does taste like chicken, absolutely. <laughs> also, let me remind you, if there is a segment or guest that you have a special affinity to, or you would like John to make a specific best of show just for you, go ahead and send him an email, Greg. Uh, I'm sorry, John, J-O-N, at thebbqcentralshow.com. That's J-O-N at thebbqcentralshow.com. And don't forget... In order to get the best moments, in order to get replays audio audibly of this show, you have to subscribe to the podcast feed. Our number one will be released in about an hour or so. Our number, uh, and our number two released on Thursdays, and then that best of, of course, released each and every Friday. But you do have to be subscribed to the podcast feed. Uh, by the way, if you are somebody that detests using some kind of a podcast app, but you still want to be kept informed of new episodes that hit the feed, you can download or subscribe to the show through email. So if you if you go to the main website and you go to the subscribe thing at the top of the navigation, one of the options says email. And if you put in your email address, at some point, during the day that the show was released into the feed, it's not like immediately in the morning, but at some point during the day, you're going to get an email and it says whatever the title of the show is for that day. And then you click on that. It will take you to a web browser with a player in it. You can listen to the show right from there. So you don't have to use Google podcast. You don't have to use Apple podcast or Stitcher or any of those other things. If you don't want to do that, if you're totally against that, whatever the case may be, you can subscribe through email just that easily, and it works. I'm subscribed through it to make sure that it works because in the beginning it didn't work like a couple of years ago, and now it goes off like a champ. It's great. I, of course, prefer Google Podcasts myself, but in this instance, it does work. Tomorrow, I will get an alert at some point. Thursday, I will get an alert at some point, and Friday, I will get an alert at some point as well. Email from Bubba in Georgia. This is going on a couple of weeks ago, so I apologize. Greg, your take last week on eating undercooked chicken or moldy bread was hilarious. Do you really think people are put into that position for real? Bubba, do you do I think people are making the decision to eat dangerous food in order to potentially save face? With to be in laws or bosses? Absolutely. Would I do that? Hell no. But not everybody is like us. Not everybody has the testicular fortitude to look at a piece of chicken. Now, look, uh, I don't, contrary to popular belief, <laughs> I don't carry my thermopen all the time with me and temp everything that I get. By the way, I'm not going out at this point, like to restaurants. So when I was carrying my thermopen and we were temping steaks, uh, A, that was a segment of the show. 
But I'm not showing up to people back when you showed up to people's house. I'm not showing up to people's houses and temping chicken and uh, looking for mold on the bread. I mean, if I see a piece of moldy bread, if it's just like one corner, I've done it in my own house. You know, the bread gets away from you, whatever the case may be, and it's just on a corner. I'll rip the corner off. I'll eat the bread. As long as it's not hard. Same thing if I'm over somebody's house. But if the chicken looks suspect, I will sit there and say, hey, you know what? Uh, I don't think I'm going to be taking part into that chicken. Why would you have that chicken? It looks underdone. To me, it looks underdone. Do you have an instant read meat thermometer? That we can check the doneness of that chick. But no, we'll just go ahead and eat it. Uh, just no, I'm not going to eat it. I've had really bad food poisoning from uh, Lenny's, Wendy's. It's not good. I had the uh, the the food poisoning that I had was so bad from Lenny's. Uh, podcasters, I apologize in advance, but I'm showing something visually. All here, around my eyes, I had burst the capillaries from the amount of heaving that I was doing. Not only was it productive vomit, I was cho- uh, Never mind. Uh, we'll get to Big Mo Kason coming up here in a few minutes. Let me talk to you quickly about Big Papa Smokers, the one-stop online shop for all things barbecue. Their curated selection of only the best outdoor cooking and grilling supplies will get you on the path to better barbecue results in no time. Everything at BigPapaSmokers.com has been Pitmaster approved by Sterling Big Papa Ball himself. From the award-winning sauces to the American-made grills and smokers, Big Papa has something for every type of outdoor cook, no matter the skill level. They have the championship rubs and seasonings. We know that. The 13 perfectly balanced ones, if that's enough for you. They also own Granny's Barbecue Sauce. So if you're looking for something that's a little outside of the ordinary or you're just sick of what's on the market right now, Granny's Barbecue Sauce certainly something you're going to want to try. And they have the cookers. You know that's right. If you're looking for a versatile smoker that's easy to use, check out the Mac 2 Star General Pellet Cooker. Big Papa's the exclusive Mac dealer, even offering special packages. If you're not a fan of pellet cookers, okay. Try the old Hickory Ace BP, the only charcoal smoker that Big Papa trusts on his competition trailer. Not sure of what grill you need? You can't go wrong with what they're selling over at BigPapaSmokers.com. If you have questions, call them, 877-828-0727. That's 877-828-0727. Or shop their website, BigPapaSmokers.com. That's B-I-G-P-O-P-P-A, Smokers.com. We are back with Big Mo Kason. Right after this, stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to the number one most downloaded barbecue and grilling podcast anywhere. The Barbecue Central Show. Monthly visits from a killer hog, a cooking guy, a man named Meathead, the author of Barbecue Bible, a grill girl, a bristly barbecue journalist, and the male feasance of the barbecue world known as the Embedded Correspondence. Only found right here on the Barbecue Central Show. All right, welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by Pit Barrel Cooker, the most unbelievable outdoor cooking device on the planet, currently available in two sizes with a host of accessories. Whether you're a beginner or professional, definitely a cooker you want to add to that arsenal. Visit pitbarrelcooker.com and tell them the Barbecue Central Show sent you. My next guest, or my first guest in the second hour, very popular within the barbecue and grilling community. You've seen him on TV shows of all sorts. Selling rubs and sauces. Recently announced he might be opening a barbecue restaurant in his hometown of Des Moines, Iowa. The Register there did an article on that recently. And within the interview, Mo taking a few shots at some local barbecue places. And at least on social media, has gotten some blowback on a number of different sites. And we will go ahead and talk about that as well as a number of other items. So we race to the hotline and welcome back friend of the show, Mo Kason. Hey, Mo. Mo, there you are. Yeah, hey, I'm here. Yeah. What's up? What's up, man? All right. 
So great to have you back on the show, first and foremost. Appreciate you making time. Also, secondarily, appreciate you kind of redoing the schedule. My second-hour guest uh, decided to enjoy a little bit more Florida beach time than a uh, little hang time in the Barbecue Central show, Jungle. That's so, all right. You know, that's just the way it is. So I appreciate you uh, mm-hmm. flowing with me in that regard. Mo, let's go ahead uh, and get some background here on this interview, first and foremost, because okay. we as readers only see the finished product, right? So is yeah. there anything within the article that was not correct or was taken out of context? And I guess uh, outside of that, how how did the interview go with this report? So what happened was is that um, I took I went down to uh, Okeechobee, Florida, uh, with my big thousand gallon pit, my new pit from my new Syntex pit, and I did a charity event for the Navy SEALs, SEAL Legacy Foundation, and then from there I went over and uh, took it over back to Luling, Texas, where Syntex Smokers is at, and they're building me uh, a new custom trailer for the pit to sit on, so I can just walk right up to it off the ground and open the doors. Uh, at that point, I just had like a big gooseneck that I bought out of West Virginia just to be able to get it back from uh, when I bought it last last summer. So I was on my way back, dropped the pit off, and was heading back to Iowa, and uh, I got a phone call. I was probably getting ready to get in Oklahoma, and I had a, a, a phone call from a guy, a, a Des Moines Register uh, reporter, and he goes, uh, he asked me, he said, hey, I just got out of a meet- governor's meeting, and uh, I don't know if it was governors and city council guys and people and stuff, and they were you know kind of talking about plans in Des Moines. And there's a, uh, a historically kind of a black area down uh, right off of downtown um, that they're revitalizing. Uh, it's, I think it's the old courthouse down there. And um, I've had a couple about a few meetings with uh, these investors that want to have a mo case on barbecue down there, which is great. Uh, I think the area is going to be great. I think it'd be great for Des Moines. So uh, I talked with this reporter for about like three hours on the way back wow. home. And uh, we talked about everything, talked about, he asked me about my, you know, how I came up, my family, uh, my stint in the Navy, um, just everything I've, you know, I've done, you know, TV shows and, and other opportunities I've had. And then we had a great conversation. I talked about my kids, my family, uh, my mother, my grandmother, you know, I just talked about a lot of different things. And one of the things we did talk about is he asked me what I thought about Des Moines barbecue. And uh, I'm a very straight shooter. And uh, I told exactly what the article said. That's exactly what I said. And I truly believe it. I mean, that's just, just my opinion. But I think uh, uh, I've been blessed to be able to go all over this great country and eat barbecue and cook barbecue. And so I know firsthand what great or even good restaurant quality barbecue is. I know it. I cook it. So I know. And so uh, uh, it's unfortunate that this young cat just focused on that section, which was a very small part of the whole conversation. Uh, it says they I talked to you for like three hours, but you know, um, that's just reporters. You know, they 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 you know some some are gonna should have focused on the whole breadth of who I am versus you know uh, the little drama uh, that uh, that he you know put in the article which you know to be honest i mean i haven't had any over any of my social platforms messenger text nothing nobody has piped in on me and said anything negative no blowback or anything like that zilch god strike me down so when you go Um, if i go on facebook and go into you know this group or or that group i I made a post about it and i got a, a whole bunch of reactions if, oh if, yeah, if all of yeah, these, yeah. I'm sure you're. I'm sure you did. How come? Like, what's your thought on how come nobody's coming after you then? Uh because you know, if any, the people who truly know me, I mean, I'm a good, humble dude. I'm a nice guy. Now I'm gonna tell you like it is, and I don't take a back seat to nobody. Ever have, never will. But people who know me know I'm a decent, good man. Now, if I'm going to tell you your stuff is raggedy, your stuff is raggedy. In my opinion, it's raggedy. I'm not trying to be mean. 
and well, you know, yeah, I, you know, I, I kind of, I don't even follow those, these other individuals at all. I mean, I don't even follow them at all, so I don't. Know. I haven't actually read the article. My wife read it and was telling me some things, and uh, I didn't even read the article. I mean, because I'm just busy. You know what I mean? I literally have not read the article. And uh, she just gave me snippets of it. And uh, I was like, oh, well, that's unfortunate, man. I said, you know, because I talked three hours to this dude, man, and he just focused on on this. And another thing I want to let people know. So I don't need to do any publicity stunts for a restaurant, okay, because my food speaks for itself. I don't need to trip the Dow trial somebody in order to put myself up. I'm going to get that clear with Mo case on because I don't do that, okay? If I'm telling you something about your food, it's because it's what I think about your food, period. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I know that you get people out there piming, especially in social media. Believe me, I've got social media platforms, and they come, they get in there, and and I mean, I haven't even really seen any, anything, but I know it's out there. But uh, there's just people that just want it hard, you know. And those people that I, you know, there's some people that I know because I've seen a couple things, you know. But those are people that always was against you anyway. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's one thing I learned about, about barbecue. 99% of the people out there in this, in this barbecue community are awesome people. Awesome. Okay. But it's that 1% of folks that have, that are not really good people. They may say they are, but they're not. They talk about people. They are into the drama. Um, why? Barbecue's huge. It's room for everybody. But you get people that hate on you, and I've learned this by just having the opportunities that I have. I've been very blessed for the, all the opportunities I've had, and they're still coming. Okay? Because I'm a good dude, and I know what the hell I'm talking about. Okay? And like I said, you could be the baddest dude in the world or baddest girl in the world, cook all kinds of trophies and everything. But if you don't communicate with the people, you ain't going to get that opportunity. Or you may not want to have the opportunity. Okay, so don't hate on somebody because they're having an opportunity to take care of my family. I got a wife and four kids, two dogs and two cats. I'm taking care of business. Okay, straight up. And nobody's going to come up and talk to me because they know they're going to come to my face and talk like that because they know I'll check them. And I ain't trying to be mean, but that's just how I am. Anybody who knows me, I don't take a back seat to nobody. Okay? I come from the womb of Mary Kaysan, and she came from the womb of Margaret Kaysan of 17 kids. Okay? So I'm not taking a back seat to nobody. I don't care what you want. That means nothing to me. Okay? That only matters to you and your immediate family and friends. Okay? Or anybody else that wants to be a fan of yours. And that's fine. Okay? I've got trophies too, but I don't sit there and brag about it. I don't sit there and say, uh, well, I've won more than you have. I've had that happen to me. Well, guys come up. I've won more contests than you have. Why are you getting an opportunity on TV and I don't? I said, well, you got to look at yourself. I don't know why. I've just been very blessed. Okay, that's all I can say, man. Don't hate on me because I get an opportunity. If I connect with people, I connect with people because I keep it real. And I know how to cook. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just been awesome for me, man. So like I say, 99% of the people out in this world in competition, barbecue, barbecue period, it's just a wonderful crowd. Okay. They're just great people. And that's what I am. I'm just a good guy, man. Um, but believe me, you come to me crazy or sideways, I'm gonna let you know, you know what I mean? I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, cow or, or cow down to nobody. There's no man walking on this globe that's above me. Nobody. Mo Kaysan okay. joining me here on the show. Mo Kaysan BBQ.com. Let me get that right because I effed it up in the uh, newsletter, which I apologize. Mo Kaysan BBQ.com. Oh, do you really want to get into the restaurant business? Oh, I've always wanted to. I really? could have had a place. A lot, yeah, because, you know, here's how, here's how I look at it. You know, the COVID was devastating for a lot of restaurants. It really was. I just looked in my neighborhood, um, some Brazilian steakhouse just six blocks from me. Um, awesome, I thought. But because their margins were whatever it was, as soon as that COVID came in, like a freight train, they're done. They pulled up, closed up shop. And a lot of restaurants closed up shop. Yep. 
So you got to look at it as an opportunity um, to be able to start something new. Uh, I'm about to be in a position to where uh, I'll have the opportunity to build a dabble into that. I've always wanted people. I, I I just get a. It's so gratifying when people eat my food and my sides, and you can see the joy in their face. That means the world to me. You know what I mean? When I drove my rig all the way down to Okeechobee, Florida, thousand gallon stick burner, at ten miles a gallon from Des Moines, Iowa. Okay, I could have took the easy route. I never have been that guy. Could have cooked ahead of time and brought it in a bunch of coolers and stuff. That's not me. Okay. When I got there to that place, my pit sat out there in the yard. I fired that thing up at two in the morning. I got, I knew it's going to be a 12 hour cook. I was cooking briskets, cooking beef ribs and cooking pork butts. And I knew that it was going to be about a 12 hour cook on that thousand gallon pit. Cause I know that pit like the back of my hand. And sure enough, meats went on at 5 AM. Dinner service was at 7 PM the next day. Meats were coming off at 5 p.m. the next day. Put them in, wrapped in butcher paper, put them in auto sham, set it at 170. They just stayed in stasis until I start processing them right before serving. That is knowing what the hell you're doing. And then having people eat your food and blowing their mind. Blowing their mind. Multi-millionaires coming up to you, want your number. Uh, I've never had bad barbecue like this before. This is outstanding. That I'm already scheduled to come back and do the thing next year. And do another thing here in the Houston uh, this this June for the same Navy SEALs uh, Foundation. So it's like um, when you know what the hell how, how, how to cook. Like I said again, you give me two cinder blocks in a rack, I'll make it happen because I know how to cook. Okay, because I, I learn by being self-taught. Okay, I come from a rich family of cooking taste, texture. I know these things. That's why I make my own rubs. That's why I make my own sauce. Cause I know, and they're, and, and, and they do great because I know. Okay. When people enjoy your food, you see it. Well, is there a difference? It, it garners you. Is there a difference, you know, for you to take this trip down to Florida and cook your food, mm-hmm. as you're saying, everybody's like, is there a difference though, in opening it up to a restaurant? Where you're gonna have to be there every day, and as you have said, no, you're, you're a micromanager no, of food, and you know all this. Yes, I mean, will things change? What it at is, that point? it's it's methods. You know, people talking about well, uh, running a restaurant's different than running a uh, competition. I know that there is, but th- it does not mean you still can put out amazing barbecue every day in the restaurant. Look at my, my boy John Lewis. Okay. Look at look at all the guys I know. Look at uh, Brian McGee down in Q39, down in Kansas City. Look at uh, Ronnie Killen down in Houston. I mean, there's I, there's a litany of them that put out consistent badass barbecue every day. Okay, I can sit up under the easy up on a three day stint of vending barbecue, and everything that comes off my pit, it's got to be banging. The guys who work for me and the guys who work for me, they know. Do not take a damn rack of ribs off of there unless they're spot on, texture wise. You don't just rack everything off because you got four hours on them. That's the problem. That's the disconnect. Okay. You don't take food or briskets or pork butts that you cooked a day ahead in advance, put them in the walking cooler, cool them down, bring them back out, process them, put them in a little Ziploc bag and microwave them, put a little butter butter bun and call it barbecue. I couldn't do it. I've never done that. And I never will do that. Couldn't do it. Okay, because I care about my customers. So when this opportunity blossoms and to where it gets to be a brick and mortar, I've got two opportunities. I got one going on down in Pensacola and I got one here in Des Moines, Iowa. And I'm going to tell you. When I cook, it's all about your method. It's all about your seasonings and knowing how to cook and putting the effort in. You think uh, Aaron Franklin's uh, cooking ahead of time and reheating? Hell no. He's coming in at two o'clock or has boys coming in at two o'clock keeping those pits fit, fired up, and putting that meat on. Okay? That's the difference. That's separating the wheat from the shaft. Okay? That's people making great barbecue or people making average or subpar barbecue because they just want to make a dollar. I'm not about that. I can look my mom in the face. Well, when we talk about the restaurant opportunities, you mentioned Pensacola. I don't know anything about that, but as I read through this article... 
one of the things that jumps out to me as this guy is writing it, I mean, it's, it seems at this point, and I don't know how up to date this article is with what's actually happening from a business standpoint with you, but it seems pretty far from getting off the ground. In the article, it says there's still funding yeah, that is. needs to be secured. Their place yep. still needs to go through some renovation. So, I mean, yep. you're a, a guy that knows some business here, uh, maybe you like to gamble uh, a little bit. Do, are, what kind of odds are you placing on this thing actually coming off? Actually, the odds are good because... Uh, like 50-50 good through, or like 90% oh, good? More, I, more than 50. I would say about 70%. Because basically all they're securing, this guy is an awesome developer. He owns that property. He, he, he's the steward of this property. This is historic piece of property it's the old courthouse and um there's funding uh government funding to re revitalize this area and redo this beautiful i don't know 18 something 1898 whatever buildings beautiful building i actually have a walkthrough on on the on the 18th of this month and um it's a really really cool building so there's 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 money there that they want to give to revitalize it and get this place where it's going to be on and popping. So it's, 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 I mean, I've had about three meetings with these guys and, and, uh, so the funding is, uh, is there. They just, ha they had to secure it before the end of last year, which they did. And that's why my name came up, you know? Um, obviously nothing is completely 1000% set in stone, but that's the game plan. Are they, are they, how do I ask this the right way? Um, it's not offensive to you, but are they leveraging your name in order to make sure that they can get this thing off the ground? And if so, are you reaping any kind of uh, benefits from being who you are? Uh, basically, you know, the way I got it set up and the way I'm going to have it set up with my lawyer is that it's um, I'm going to write the menu, equipment, but I don't have to be there for the day-to-day -day staff and I'm getting a percentage every month. Um, that's what I want. They asked me how far did I want to go, how far I want to do it. That's what I do because it frees me up to be able to go to and do other things. Um, but believe me, the methods and the I mean, I mean, I'm already got guys that, that call Doco Company in Des Moines. They do uh, my chicken barbecue pizza, which is which is killer. Um, they're going to be a partner in it, and uh, I, you know, and so I've got another person that's. Uh, uh, that's also uh, an investor and wants to be in part of it. Um, so it would be on a point. I would be there making sure everything is spot on. And uh, once I feel secured that, I mean, and they would do the hiring, they would do the firing, they would do the staffing, they would do the day to day, but I would be there a lot. Okay. I can walk in anytime, make sure it's on point. So, it's, but isn't this where you potentially open yourself up? Uh if you're not there, if you're not the one that's always cooking and doing the micromanaging, I mean, I get it. Uh, you know, uh, there's uh, uh, giving responsibility and, and uh, yep. there's a bigger word that I can't think of delineating uh, or, you know. Uh, yeah. it, it, so if, no, no, in if the it beginning, it's going to be me. If it goes south, no. in the beginning, it's going to be you. But what about six months from now and then something changes and you're in Berlin or, you know, doing or on a TV show or whatever? You know, your yeah. name is the one that people are going to see the most, right? That's true. But that's about having good methods and good practices. It, it, it's, it is simplistic in a sense that I know people who have restaurants. And I've heard, you know, and I know people, you know, friends of mine who have restaurants. And it, it is hard work. And I know that it's all about your staff. It's all about your staff. You know, it could be as simple as a sticker on the smoker. Say, oh, the old hickory rotisserie. Add a stick of hickory at this time. Simple as that. Two sticks this time. And you'll still get people that, oh, I, I lost track. Of, I didn't. I forgot. You know, that's the human element. The human element is always the person, um, uh, the, that's where your weak link is. Okay. Your recipes can be spot on, your cooking practices can be spot on, but it comes down to your employees. And I'm dealing with the guys at Doco, the great guys. Everybody who works there, it's it's just a great team. And same thing down in Pensacola that I'm working on. These are two people that have husband and wife that have 
run great successful businesses in Pensacola and they got a great staff and they know how to hire people and they know how to run operations. Okay. They, they, they know how to run day to day operations and it's awesome. And I've known these guys for years and they're just, they do just do a great job. And so I have trust and faith that even more so than in Des Moines, I know, I know, cause I know these other people I've known from hell, 10 years, eight years, maybe, you know what I mean? And so I know what, how successful they are and I know how their management style is that it just marries well with being able, they've already secured land. They've already gotten, I got to go down there to Pensacola actually for a meeting here real soon, but they've already got an architecture. I mean, it's, it's just going to be, it's just, it's just going to be awesome. So are you and buying so, in uh, to ownership or like, what's the what's no. the business thing for you then? Are you licensing no, your name me, or? Yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. But, but I mean, they, they, they provide, uh, they're going to get all the equipment and everything and, and I get my percentage every month. Um, can you hold on one second, Mo, and we'll come back on the other side and finish up on this and then yeah. talk about some mm-hmm. Mo Kason. But All right, stand by. We're talking with Mo Kason from Mo Kason Barbecue. Mo Kason BBQ.com is the website. I'll talk to you quickly about Pits and Spits, and that'll catch us up for the balance of the show. Since 1983, Pits and Spits has been handcrafting smokers and grills in Houston, Texas in that time. Establishing itself as one of the premier brands in high-quality offset cookers and, more recently, pellet cookers. Pits and Spits sets itself apart by using heavy 7- and 10-gauge stainless in every cooker. Fully welded construction that you can feel when you use the unit. 304 stainless roll-top lid and a front shelf on every single smoker. Why does it matter? Well, by using higher-quality materials, Pits and Spits smokers can reach and maintain temperatures, allowing you to worry more about the meat than the heat. And by providing a fully welded smoker, you don't have to worry about the grease or smoke leaking out of the barrel. The grill's not going to rattle apart as you move it through the backyard by using 304 stainless. You're getting an heirloom quality product that you can pass down to your kids. Now, where some companies are focusing on the low cost of uh, ownership, Pits and Spits focuses on craftsmanship using quality materials. Are there cheaper ways to make these products? Absolutely. They don't like tack welds, cheap stainless electronics that you can't trust. Having in-house manufacturing gives them complete control of design and standards. Not something you're going to find with stuff brought in from overseas. Steel suppliers supply materials to be used in some of the harshest environments. No matter where you are across the country, you know they're going to work. And the controllers are made right here in the state. They have unimpeded transparency into the program. Pits and Spits has a dealer network across the country. If there is one close to you, call Coy in the shop, 844 844- 650-6250. Whether you're a backyard grill master or a competition cooking team, Pits and Spits has a product for you. You can check out their products, pitsandspits.com. That's the website, all spelled out, pitsandspits.com, where you can see their pits in the wild across social media with their handle at Pits and Spits. We are back with Mo Kason right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Celebrating over 10 years of prolific and unparalleled live fire barbecue and grilling talk. And yes, it's still being done from Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by Smithfield. Go to smokingwithsmithfield.com to sign up for the Committed Cooks program. Last week we announced the winners of the uh, Smithfield Grant program. 3017, I believe it was, that got it carry over from last year and then 19 new ones this year you can also go to smithfield.com as well all right big mo joining us here in the second hour appreciate you hanging with me through the break there pal uh let's go ahead and finish up this article stuff and then we can talk about some more mo case on business uh Mm -hmm. When you're reading through the article, there seemed to be uh, two hot buttons that stuck out with a lot of folks, and that was specifically the comments about a place called uh, Jethro's Barbecue. I don't know uh, if a lot of people are familiar with Jethro's or if that's just more of a a real local thing. And perhaps the reason that the the second one uh, garners so much attention is because of who the owner is and what he's done on the competition scene. But as you look back through Jethro, you know what, let's just high level it here. You don't have a restaurant open yet. You talk about getting into the restaurant. And then you do give your opinion on the quality of the food in both. Jethro's, you said, was garbage. Uh, Smokey D's, you said, didn't have any soul. 
uh, like looking back at it, would you have rather have been in business for some amount of time, like in the restaurant business for some amount of time before you levy those charges or it completely irrelevant doesn't matter? It doesn't, it doesn't matter because it's my opinion. And people are going to come to my food no matter what. Once you taste my food, you, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, the people who know, know. Um, I don't have to tiptoe around anybody. See, that, that basically, that's what you you know, uh, these people that come up and, and have, have a problem with it. It's my opinion. If that, if, if that person that owns that business had something to say about me, it'd be crickets, more likely. But because I say it, oh, that's a big problem. Uh, why are you disrespect? It's not disrespecting. It's because I have experience and I know what good barbecue is. And if I don't think your barbecue is good, I'm going to let you know it's no good. I'm not worried. That's what I'm trying to say. I do not do police. I don't do stunts to try to garner uh, people to come my way because I'm, I'm potentially open a restaurant. That's not how I work. If I gave that reporter my honest opinion, no matter what I think about the person in general, I'm just giving you my honest opinion. I've seen the process. It's not like I don't know, because I know the process. I know what they're doing. You know, for example, with the Jethro's. I remember when they opened up in Drake area, which is not too far from me. I waited a few weeks, uh, actually probably a month, and I took my wife there. And uh, the owner was there. And I'm not one of them kind of guys that has an ego and, and thinks because I'm a barbecue guy that I that I know it all. Because I don't. I'm always con uh, continue to learn and to improve and to grow. But I know what good food is. Okay. And I ordered a platter. I'll never forget it. First and last time I've ever been in Jethro's. I ordered a, a platter. It had smoked turkey, pulled pork, brisket, some baked beans, and like some mac and cheese. And uh, when the platter came out, it was a train wreck. Straight up. This platter cost 20 something dollars. And it was a train wreck. And I'm going to break it down to you of what I experienced. The owner came over, kind of arrogant, because, you know, it's a new store. He thinks he's putting it down. And he goes, well, what did you think about the food? I said, you want my honest opinion? He goes, yeah. So, okay. The first thing, let's talk about the pulled pork. The first thing you did wrong with this is that you pulled it and you shredded it too early. Okay? Because the ends are all gnarly and hard. Well, what happens when you crack a big protein like that open? Air hits it. It's going to start going south. Okay? That's why when I vend or when I serve, nothing gets cracked and processed until I need those sandwiches. Now, I know a buddy of mine that helps me in Vins and, and Danville. I brought him on. He's from Kansas City, good friend of mine. He did a different process. I said, this is Mo Case on barbecue. We don't shred ahead of time. We don't do that. He said, well, that's a lot more work. So no, it's not. You may need an extra guy. But as the orders come in, you have a full pan there, and you start breaking those shredless parts up as you get. Because pork has a beautiful smell and look and texture, and that dissipates as soon as you crack that shell on that pork butt. Okay, I'm giving you the best that I can give you. I'm not going to shred way in advance and put it in this pan and sit it up in an in a, in a auto sham or warmer, all shredded and let the moisture just evaporate off of that piece of meat. So the ends of that pulled pork was all gnarly and hard. It was like almost like jerky. That's how bad it was. The next thing was the brisket. The brisket was anemic, had no smoke ring, had no really good flavors that complemented the brisket. Uh, it just looked like pot roast with no smoke ring. And I'm not saying smoke ring is supposed to mean anything, but it is a process of burning wood down. Okay, that is a telltale key that you cooked over uh, wood. And uh, it was just bland. It was just bland. I mean, it could have been, he could have just had salt and pepper on it and would have been better. It was just like almost non existent. And then this was the kicker. When I go to Texas, I love Texas. So when I go to Texas and get barbecue, when I order turkey, that's one of the things I order all the time is turkey. I like turkey, smoked turkey. When you get turkey, it should be a turkey breast. Okay, either you're going to brine it or you're not. You're going to put your seasoning on or whatever, and you're going to 
smoke it, and you're going to slice it. This dude was taking deli press turkey, like you get like out of the deli, a deli roll of turkey, and throw it in the smoker. And this restaurant to do that, just to cut corners. But the texture is all kinds of wrong when you do that. It's just wrong. And it doesn't taste right because it's already been prepared into a deli roll. So now you got those flavors, then you put barbecue rub on top of that. That doesn't complement that deli meat. And uh, it was wrong. And, you know, I called him on all those things, and I was being, I, was being, I, was, I was being nice about it. And he looked at me, and the first thing, the only words came out of his mouth is this. He goes, well, I don't really care about the barbecue. I just want to sell beer. That's the exact words to me. I looked at my wife, and I said, well, why do you got a sign that says barbecue outside? And he just walked away. So that tells you. There's people out there putting out a restaurant, putting out mediocre food just because they want to make a buck. Barbecue is as old as America, man. It comes from humble roots, humble roots, passionate. It's not like having a bad egg roll somewhere or a bad hot dog or hamburger. Man, you got some jacked up barbecue. Ain't nobody coming back to you, man. Nobody. Okay? So I take barbecue very seriously, man. I'm passionate about barbecue. And if I'm going to spend my hard-earned money, it better be right. Now, everybody has uh, their levels of what they like. I mean, obviously, there's places that I think might not be very good. They have a crowd. But in my opinion, you can do better. What does food not having soul mean? Flavor. Texture. Proper texture. Everything has it. It's all, all chemistry. All food cooking, it's just chemistry. And you may have, and that's one thing, you know, uh, judging on TV shows and doing all kinds of things. Texture to me is almost as important, if not better, than flavor. And now it sounds crazy. But you can have a great tasting rib, but be tough as shoe leather, you have already lost. You can have as simple as just a little sprinkle of salt and black pepper on that on that pork rib. That's it. But because because you cooked it to perfection, that's going to be a great eat because you're already going to get those natural pork flavors coming off that pork rib. So texture to me means a lot. So does flavor, because, but everybody's flavor is different. That's why you can have one flavor in one part of the country and you can have another flavor in another part of the country. But one thing is singular when you're cooking that piece of meat. It's texture. Brisket's got to be a certain way, okay? If you're going to a place and they're cutting the brisket paper thin, there's a reason why they're doing that, okay? There's a reason why they could cut it thick, you know? Um, if they cut it thick, it's because they have overcooked their brisket and they're trying to hold it together. If they undercook their brisket, they're going to cut it paper thin because they're trying to not have you see uh, the texture of it being um, tough. So... Um, to me, texture is so important. So when I cook, that's what I said. Even in a restaurant, teach your people not to rack it. Just because you have 12 hours on a brisket don't mean all the briskets on there are going to be right. That's what a pit master comes in, a proper pit master, and he checks or she checks. You take your probe and you check. Go to, I mean, when, I, when I've been, I can vent, I've been in Danville, Kentucky for the last 10 years. It'd be 30,000 people and seven food vendors. Pay Lake Porkers there, Mike Mills, 17th Street, uh, Peg Lake Porkers. Uh, there's uh, all type of people that are there and they're vending and they're all banging it out. And, but when I cook, everything is coming off. It's got to be spot on. And once you teach your people to do that, you can sit back and smoke a cigar and relax knowing that you got, uh, good staff that are that are that are executing. These are the same people that work for me year after year after year after year. So they know exactly what I want. I don't put my name to nothing that ain't right. I mean, I did a thing down in uh, St. Louis, big festival down there, and I sold out all the ribs for the organizer. Sold sold out all their ribs. Um, had my big old hickory going and and had two loads and and sold out all the ribs and. Uh, because the organizer was worried about trying to make money. And he had one of the other teams come down and bring me a cooler full of ribs. He opened the cooler up and I said, I can't do that. Just because you want to make money, I can't do that. I can't put my name to this. This is not mine. I don't want you. And I said, that's and I told you, I said, nothing personal to you. I said, but I'm not putting my name to nothing that's not me. Just because 
the dollar aspect of it. That's the problem, man. Is you gotta, and that's what I mean by having soul. You gotta believe in what you're doing. You gotta believe in your food, man. You know, when I my sides rival my proteins. That's the problem. A lot of these restaurants out there, okay, they may have good meat, but then their sides suck, or they may have good sides and their proteins suck. A great restaurant bangs that are all around. My homeboy John Lewis out there in South Carolina, killing it. You know, uh, there's there's all kinds of people out there. I mean. It, Everything you eat is like, damn, this is good, man. Damn, these are. I mean, even if, even if it's a a different type of potato salad, but because it's executed correctly, it's still damn good. I'm a mustard based potato salad guy. I'm not a German potato salad guy, but if I have some damn good potato German potato salad, it's good. You know what I'm saying? I'm not so dead set. Well, it's got to be this way, this way. You know, I love vinegar. I love North Carolina style barbecue. That doesn't work with a lot of part of the country, but I love it. I love Texas barbecue. I love when you got barbecue, you ain't got no sauce on it and it's banging. Okay. My boy, Ronnie killing, killing it because he knows how to cook. He knows how to cook and everything comes out. Look at Rob McGee down at Q39 killing it because he knows how to cook and everybody underneath him executes his game plan because he cares because that's your name, dude. Your food that you walk out of there, that is your calling card. That is your resume. Okay, It doesn't matter how many trophies you got. If you come out there and got some raggedy brisket, what are they going to remember? They don't care about you got a four-foot trophy. They're going to look, man, this brisket sandwich is whacked. And that's all they're going to remember, and you'll never see them again. So try to do the best you can and putting out the best that you can every day. And that's what I'm all about, man. Is that don't give the, me this stuff about, well. Was that the ahead. issue that you had with Iowa Smokey D's then? Well, I know. Well, I don't know if the process changed, and I'm not sitting there trying to throw people on the bus, but I'm. A, I, I just put bars, okay. Uh, I know his process. I know uh, when he started out, and I mean, and the reason I said is this because I'm a nice guy, and I've seen God has blessed me with two sets, a pair of eyes and a pair of ears, and I've seen, and I've heard a lot of different things. Over the years, which is shallow and petty and childlike. And I forgive, Greg, but I don't forget. And when I don't forget, that changes my relationship with you. And to sit there and and puff yourself up because you're a world champion, like I said again, that means absolutely zero to 99% if not more than that, to the masses. That's only important to you. I've got a garage full of trophies too. But they're in the garage. I love, I have memories of all those trophies that I won. Not all of them that I can remember, but the ones that were significant that I won, like my first grand championship, all of those things are important because it, 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 I'm passionate about barbecue and I love barbecue. I love competition barbecue of it. But I'm humble. I do not let trophies and status affect my behavior to other human beings. Okay. That's the problem with people. There's a small percentage of people out there who think because they want X, Y, and Z that they're supposed to be gifted opportunities. That's when they come and hate on you. You know, like when I did that little Caesars commercial, well, you got these two yahoos standing in front of little Caesars and making a joke out of it. Okay. Why? I'm taking care of my four kids, man. I'm taking care of my dogs, my cats, my wife, I'm taking care of everybody, my household. Okay. I got an opportunity coming. I'm going to make it happen. Why are you trying to clown? Because you're hating on somebody. I don't hate on nobody, man. I don't. But I'll tell you like it is. That's the problem. Okay? You get a small percentage of people out there that are that way. And it's very minute. And those people end up excluding themselves anyway because of their behavior. Okay? I've seen a lot of things, Greg, in competitions. I've heard a lot of things. Literally with my own ears. I've seen a lot of things. Okay? And... I'll never, ever go down that path. I'll never be that person that belittles somebody or makes fun of somebody, okay, on a barbecue competition. Really? Let me tell you something, man. The world of barbecue from the, in, from the beginning, the beautiful barbecue that we enjoy today, the culture was started from humble beginnings. People like to throw around, you know, the goat of uh, basketball and the goat of football. 
You know what? I'm going to tell you something, man. To me, the goat of barbecue is this. This is the goat. These are the folks who took those rough cuts of meat to feed their family and friends. And look at what we have today. It's because of them. Period. Okay? So, be humble. Do not think you're bigger than the world. Barbecue on a ruler, 12 inches, is this big. Competition barbecue is an eighth of an inch in reality. Stay humble, man. That's all you got to do. And everything will work out. Mo, from a 2021 perspective, obviously 2020 was weird in, in many different ways. Travel restricted, competitions restricted, blah, blah, blah. But as you look at 2021... Uh, what are you looking at uh, outside of the restaurant stuff from a business perspective? And do you plan on getting out and traveling at any point, uh, whether it be towards the end of the summer or, or even before that? Yeah, I had all kinds of stuff on deck for 2020. Um, I've been blessed to be able to, to I was actually in Dega Garcia in Singapore doing the Super Bowl of last year. Uh, their Armed Forces Entertainment reached out to me. I'm prior Navy. Um, it was just a great opportunity they reached out and uh first time they did something like having a pit master come out to military bases and do clinics you know classes cook barbecue for them uh and it's just it's just awesome to be able to do that because i served i was in the united states navy i served on the u.s missouri battleship desert storm came back decommissioned her and i went on the u.s's peleloo and um to be able to go out and go back to these bases now like for example um January, in the January, I left to go to uh, Singapore, went to Guam, a military base over there, cooked barbecue, did a barbecue class, was awesome, brought my oldest daughter with me so she could experience all of that and help. And then from there, we flew to Singapore, there's a Navy refilling station there, meet and greet with some NFL players and cheerleaders. And then from there, I went over to Dave Garcia, which is amazing. That is an all military island owned by the British, contracted through the U.S. military, Navy. And there's no civilians on the island. It's either contractors or military people. And to be able to go over and cook food for them, our good friends at Grill Grates, send over a bunch of custom grates because all they had was open grills. It was like Gilligan's Island, dude. Tur tur turquoise water, people, volleyball slits, uh, uh, nets set up. The captain came to the base. He was just like, Mo, I'm going to tell you, man, we get country singers. We get acts come over here to entertain the troops. We have never seen nothing like you. We had a line as, as long out to the road. If you know Diego Garcia, it's like a horseshoe. It's just a top of a collapsed volcano. It's a very small island, and it was awesome. And they had such a great time and a, and a great experience that the captain wanted me to come back in July for July 4th, which is amazing because you don't get asked to come back to something like that because it's all military. So I did that. I wasn't able to come back because of COVID started cracking off. And I was supposed to go to Japan last year. I was supposed to go to South Korea last year. I was supposed to go to Alaska last year all for the military but what's great about the department of defense nothing gets canceled it just gets postponed so we'll see how it goes this year but they got me on deck after memphis and may going uh, to japan but i don't i don't know it all depends on how it is but i got uh if that happens i'll be going to uh japan i'll be going to hawaii i'll be going to back uh, going to alaska for the first time which is awesome um and um a few other places and then um i've been working with the, uh, the navy seals um, um, got some really good friends that I've developed. Um, Adam LaRoche is a retired major league baseball player. And he reached out a couple of years ago and a year and a half ago and wanted me to come down and cook because he does a lot of stuff for veterans. Great guy. And so I came down and cooked for some Navy SEALs, some special forces guys, some army guys. And, uh, I've done it like maybe four or five times now. And, uh, then this spawned when I went down to Okeechobee, this is strictly in Navy SEALs, SEAL Legacy Foundation. They raise money for Navy SEALs. They got killed in action. And, um, so, uh, it's just a fundraising benefit for them. And, um, I just got a great relationship with those guys and, and, uh, me and being proud of our Navy, you know, once you, once you're Navy, I mean, we military, it's like family, man. And so it's like, you know, it's just awesome. And then I'll be going to June, my buddy, Ronnie Killen, I'm going to use his restaurant. We're going to, there's a big charity golf cup called the Trident Cup that the Navy Seals does. Uh, I think Tiger Woods comes out and does and, and golfs and, and we're going down there and do a charity event, raise money. Uh, for the Legacy Foundation, Civil Legacy Foundation. And then I'm going to use uh, Ronnie's place and, uh, to cook um, uh, this barbecue and um, uh, his steakhouse. And 
And it's just awesome. So I got, you know, and then I've got a couple opportunities for TV shows. I did a, um, uh, I can't call, call it a sizzler. I was down in Texas and did that, but we'll see what that goes. And then um, I just got an email yesterday about an opportunity um, through Discovery, and I'll find I got a I got a Zoom call tomorrow. So we'll see what's up with that and see. I don't know what the, what it is, but we'll see what what it is. And then, um, but you know, it's just 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 awesome. You know what I mean? I'm just doing what I love, man. I worked 24 years at Des Moines Waterworks as a midnight water treatment operator, along with doing my barbecue. And worked a 40 hour week job, midnight shift. And I was able to walk away in 2017 after doing 24 years of the water treatment plant and um, to be able to do what I really want to do. And this is barbecue and, 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 and promote my sauces and rubs and, and have opportunities to go out and meet people. Because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a social butterfly. I love meeting people. I love talking with people. Um, and just to be able to have opportunities, man. I mean, you know, when Academy Sports reached out to me about putting my rubs in the stores, you know, it's just a gamble, man. I worked 24 years at the water plant, 11 to seven, man, Monday to Friday. We, even when I was doing the, the, the tip master show, I worked 40 hour weeks. I was, it was a struggle trying to, trying to come back and work for two or three days at the water plant and then fly back out and do another episode or two episodes. And, but I made it happen and, and, and it was stressful, but to be able to walk away, it's a gamble. It was, it was, it was stressful for about a two or two days. I was thinking, Oh my God, did I make the right decision? But it was the best thing I've ever done. The best thing I've ever done because Academy Sports, once I got that, uh, the peels, my stuff got into the stores. Uh, they reached out to me fall of 2017. My stuff got on the shelves in 2018, February, and it's been nothing but a blessing ever since. Now I'm getting ready to go into Ace Hardware stores, a bunch of them. Uh, I've got a great opportunity with Hy-Vee. I'm already in Hy-Vee, but they approached me with something bigger and better amazing um as long as everything gets approved and so it's just be able to take care of my family man you know uh it just makes me i'm doing i'm doing my job you know what i mean i look at my four kids all my baby all girls and i'm doing my job and i've always done my job never missed a beat and so uh barbecue's been good to me but i've been good to barbecue Mo Kason breaking it all down right here, and you can find him at MoKasonBBQ.com. See where he's available for sale retail-wise in your area. Mo, really appreciate the extended time this evening. Continued success. Right on, brother. Thank you, man. You got it. There he is, Mo Kason. MoKasonBBQ.com is his website. And before we head on out of here this evening, I got to talk to you quickly about, oh, uh, did I do that? <laughs> what an idiot. Faded the wrong one out. I got to talk to you quickly about Vortic Watches. This thing. Vortic Watch Company, a small batch custom watch manufacturing and vintage restoration company located in northern Colorado. They take antique American pocket watches and turn them into wrist watches. Their mission, preserve and enhance the legacy of manufacturing excellence in America. In order to do that, they combine traditional and cutting edge technology to create unique quality functional timepieces with exceptional value. Here's the coolest part. Each watch that Vortic makes is a unique one of a kind piece. Vortic founded on the motto that America wasn't assembled, it was built. Check out Vortic watches. For more information at VorticWatches.com. Your reaction to an extended two segments with Mo Kason. Hit me up. If you're listening to it on podcast, email me. Love your reaction, and we'll feed it back next Tuesday. We will be back to wrap the show up right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're all caught up. All the way back in the first hour, it was Meathead from AmazingRibs.com. We talked about the new Weber products that are coming out. 
the Weber Connect to Gas Grills, which will be both available on the Genesis and Spirit line. I've been trying to chase down Kevin Coleman for months now. I'm sure I've offended him at some point. But we'll keep efforting him. We can talk a little bit more about that. And then the second hour, it was Mo Kesa. Again, give me your feedback if you read the article and you found it uh, distasteful or offensive or unprofessional or you liked how Mo got down through the two, uh, through the hour this evening. Please let me know. Would love it. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. As I said, we'll run it back next Tuesday when we get there. It's the third Tuesday of the month. You know, Stephen Reichlin is going to be back. Also, I believe we will be uh, talking with first-time quarterly recurring guest Susie Bullock from Hay Grill Head, amongst some other folks as well. September 11, 2001, I will never forget, until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. This is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now.